in the method of superposition, we try to use the principle of superposition and split our structure into some simpler parts, then add their effect together to build up the overall structure that we have. To do that, we use some pre-generated tables. So consider this beam. For this beam, we can use the integration method to calculate how much is the value of slope at this end, how much is the maximum deflection at that end, and how much is the function that shows the variation of deflection for that beam. Um, this is the problem that we solved using the integration method. And as you see, the function that we come up with is this one, px squared over 6ei x minus 3l. And the maximum deflection is pl cubed over 3ei. If we get back to that table, we will see the same function for that loading. So look at this. The same function, I just take out the negative sign to, to make it compatible with the other equations. So all these beams were calculated using the integration method. Then we want to reuse these beams by adding them together to quickly calculate how much would be the deflection in a beam if a beam is subjected to different kind of loadings. So this is the basic concept of principle of superposition. All right, let me solve a problem numerically and see how we can use this principle to solve to to implement this concept to determine deflection in a beam. Consider that you want to determine how much is the deflection of this beam at the very right end, which is shown by delta. To determine that, we need to split this structure into simpler parts. Those parts that we can find the loading in the table. There is not any loading that matches these two loads in that table. So I need to split that into these two parts, this one and this one. And for each of these two parts, I can determine how much is the deflection at the right end. Let's focus on the second beam. How much is the deflection of this beam at the right end? To determine that, I simply go to the table and pick up the value for that. So here, this is the appropriate structure. And I need to determine the maximum deflection at the right end. And this is the value. So that is WL to the fourth over 8EI. So in beam number one, the value of deflection at that end is WL to the fourth over 8EI. And I can do the same for the second beam. In the second beam, I'm looking for the deflection at the same point, but with different loading. So I need to go and pick up the appropriate value from that table. I need to work with this figure. And the maximum deflection at the right end is PL cubed over 3EI. And that would be deflection of second beam at the same point. Now, how much would be the deflection if I apply these two loads simultaneously at the same time? I just need to add them together. This is the principle of superposition. So the overall deflection at that point is, by, is obtained by superposing the effect of the load in each of these two beams. And I can say delta is delta 1 plus delta 2. And the overall deflection in that beam is WL to the fourth over 8EI plus PL cubed over 3EI. And that is the answer of this problem. So as you see, this is much easier compared to integrating and considering the boundary conditions to determine how much is the equation for deflection. All right. Before solving a problem, let me go over the algorithm or the steps that we need to take to solving these kind of problems. Then I will solve a problem. And after that, I will ask you to solve a problem to make sure we understand the concept. So consider that you want to determine a deflection of a beam at a certain point. In this case, I'm determined, I want to determine the stress at the deflection at the right end. The first step is splitting the structure into simpler parts or into simpler loading, like this and this. Then, in the second step, we need to determine deflection in all split structures at the same point. So, I need to determine deflection of this beam at the right end, and I need to determine deflection of the second beam again at the right end, at the same point. Then, how can I determine these deflections? We use uh, tables to determine those values. Also, in the table, 
I recommend you to not follow the sign that you see in the table because it's a bit confusing. Just work with the absolute value of the deflection. Then we will decide about what would be the direction of the sign, what would be the direction of the deflection based on the direction of the loading. And then we decide if we need to add these deformations together or they should be subtracted from each other. All right? In step number three, we superpose the effect of the each load together to come up with the overall deflection. So that means simply add the deflections together. And make sure that you are working with the correct sign. I mean, if, for instance, in this figure, they are both pushing the beam downward, so they should be added together. If one goes upward, one goes downward, we need to subtract them from each other. Just make sure that you are working with the correct direction and correct sign. All right, I'm going to solve different problems 